does the make part sense. Is I can't even read the chat. <laughs> Uh, the truth of the matter is, even though those cracks can grab food, wood has a natural antibiotic. Uh-oh, we lost her. <laughs> oh, she's gone. But anyway. Not to worry, I'm sure, I'm sure she'll be back at some point. Yeah. Well, let me go ahead and say hi, everybody. It is good to see you all. I'm going to raise my face shield for just a second so I don't sound like I'm in a tunnel to myself. Anyway, uh, good to see everybody today. I've got Wayne, the wood turner here. Ruby might show up again. <laughs> She's having computer and uh, issues. Uh, here she comes again. There she is. You're back. She's, she's back again. <laughs> um, but anyway, I've got this piece of cherry. It's a, a, a cored out piece. This was half of a log that I cored. So all the center is out of it. In fact, I've got the other half laying in the floor behind me. Um, I've turned, I, I had one whole log. I cut it in half. I cored both halves, so I got one large bowl, one smaller bowl, and um, I've already turned two of them. This will be number three, and I'll have one, the one smaller one uh, after this. Um, we were just talking about this has a large bark inclusion here that comes out the side right here. This is a, a limb that was in the tree. There's a little bit of a, a crack right there. I think that'll go away as we turn it. If not, we'll deal with it then. Right here was some punky wood. Over on the other side, there was a crack that came down through here um, about that far. We've already put some super glue in it. And it, you can probably just see it comes up to a peak right there. This is where the bowl was going oblong and it stretched and whatnot. And the wood didn't want to stretch with it. And it is quite thick because it was wet with water, not with sap, but with water. Uh, when I put it away. So anyway, um, I'm going to get this on the lathe and get to turning on it. And uh, we'll explain some things as we go. But I'm going to let uh, probably Wayne go ahead and uh, read off the chat for us. Yeah, there's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually going to try to this week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm yeah. having trouble even staying in. Likely excuse, right? <laughs> If you lose me again, you'll have to watch for me. Yeah, will. will do, Ruby. Uh, you want to stick us in the background, Doug? Yeah, yeah, I'll get you there. Oh, all I'm doing here is I'm putting it uh, uh, between the the chuck and my live center, and that'll hold us till we can true up our tenon and get. I'll get a little bit of the outside done before I flip it around. So, there we go. There you go. Okay, so we've got Larry in to start off with, at least at the top of my uh, um, chat we have. We've got Larry in. We've got Val in. We Val from Littleville. Uh, we've got Andy, uh, door 60. Uh, going down, we've got Gerard in. Good evening, Gerard. Uh, oh, Gerard's in. He'll be back in a minute. He's watching the qualifier for the Euro 25 women's soccer, Sweden versus France. Um, right, uh, Larry's saying, I'm going to say this here to thanks everyone for the encouragement. He's done three crochet hooks this weekend and it was a blast. And I think now Larry did message me, uh, we, we swap messages over the past few days. And I think tomorrow night on my live, I'll be doing a, a crochet hook. Um, I'll probably be doing some something else as well because uh, the crochet hook probably won't take very long. Uh, we've got Mike Evans in. We've got Fred Gulliver in. Uh, Mike was is asking, are we having another chalice this evening? It, it doesn't look like it, Mike. Although it'd be a good size to drink from. Oh, wouldn't it just though? <laughs> hey, he Johnny Foster's barrel, in. Hey, Johnny. Malcolm Douglas. Still going down. I've got a hell of a way to go down here. Hey, Deal. Old Man River's in. Evening, Deal. Uh, Roger Kent, 
is in as well. Evening, Roger. And Ward's in from the west coast of Arizona. Good evening, Ward. Hey, Ward. And Jim Selby's in. He's asking Thank if everybody you. is doing well. I think we are so far. And Clint at Wood Dancers is in. Evening, Clint. And Lucy is saying that she's never used a turned crochet hook. Okay. Uh, well, you'll, you'll be able to see me turn one tomorrow night, Lucy. I have made a few, usually for my uh, sister Paula. Uh, let's see. Roger Wollum's just come in. I'm sure I'll miss some names here. James Crawford's just come in. I'm seeing just because I'm still not down at the bottom yet. Fred Gilliver's here. Barry Chitty, evening Barry. Oh God, it's just gone up again. And Al's in. Good afternoon, Al. Oh, good evening, Al. Hi, Al. Good, e good evening for me, anyway. And Thomas Kenny and uh, Thomas Kenny and Shane Hurst uh, are in as well. Hey guys. Hey, uh, Katie's in. That's uh, Cornish made 1982. That's All Katie. Right. Hey, Katie. And obviously Lucy's here. Uh, Tim Ponder is in as well. I'm gonna try to go above the the shake, but. Not and um, Bert's Bulls here. Uh, Gerard is back. He said, uh, match over. Sweden nil, France won. Lots of smiley faces. I've just seen that uh, comment from Lucy about the turned crochet hooks. You can actually buy um, um, kits crochet hook kits which come in uh -huh. different sizes and you, you just turn your own wooden handles but um i tend to turn the whole thing from wood i have seen a couple of people that go buy crochet hooks and then make a wood handle for it yeah yeah and that seems to work well but if you have the equipment and you want to to turn the whole thing and larry's turned a couple of, of pretty nice looking ones yeah it, uh, yeah they were very nice i've got to say uh raymond wise has just come in and they're not that difficult to turn and what's nice right? is you can make them in different sizes yeah yes i tell you what folks if you haven't if you haven't uh subscribed to, to larry's site or channel go go Subscribe to his channel and watch it. Watch that video or the videos. He's got a couple of them there. Right. Um, Todd Glen Cove's in. Um, and oh, Haley is here. Evening, Haley. Sorry, I missed you. And I, I think I saw Heather as well. Um, Heather's here as well. All right. We'll see what's. So that's here. that's me. That's me at the bottom now. So you can uh, carry on talking while you're turning now. Doug. All right. I got a little area right there that's not liking what's going on, and that's what's bumping. So I lower my lower my handle, get even more of a shear cut going across there. So I'm shearing that bad grain instead of scraping it. Larry's saying he doesn't have any videos. Oh, Larry, I thought I saw. Well, maybe it was just pictures I saw. There's. See, there's some of that punky stuff coming right up to the side right there. Okay, no problem. We'll take most of that off anyway. It must have been pictures I saw on Instagram, um, right? It, it, it probably was. I mean, they, they, um, Larry sent me them by messenger. Um, Johnny's having to go back to work. I'll see you later, Johnny. Mm, don't work too hard, John. <laughs> Oh, I remember a day when somebody said something about work and oh my goodness, how we gave them a hard time about that four letter word. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> what is that? I've stopped, I stopped doing that years ago. Yeah, it's it's funny, but whenever I meet young people who haven't got to the point where they're retired, they figure retired people must be bored out of their minds. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. And I, I warn them, <laughs> once you retire, you're going to be busier than you ever were when you worked. Okay, uh, Heather has said, uh, um, or oh, has asked a question of me, my lathe packed up today and would not turn on like yours because my my uh, lathe does sometimes have an intermittent fault where the, the on-off button doesn't start. In fact, there's separate buttons. It's usually the on button that doesn't, that doesn't work. Uh, Axman are sending a new pressure pad for the start button. If you can, Haley, if you've got any way of uh, actually... Um, I don't, I don't know if your lathe has a, a remote um, start-stop or if it's a fixed start-stop. But if you can get into the back of it, and if you've got a compressor with an air gun, just give it a good blowout with the, with the air gun. Uh, that's what I did to mine, and it, I haven't had any problems since. Yeah, dust and electronics don't get along very well. And it only needs a little bit of dust uh, to, to stop the contacts. I had yeah. the same thing happen the other day with my bandsaw. And all I had to do was open the motor up and uh, blow some air and clean it out, put it back together, and away it went again. There you go. I've, I've got a radial arm saw that quit working on me, and it's, it's all it is is dirt dust in that there's an electronic centrifugal clutch in there and if it's not making contacts properly it will not will not run so yeah there it sits so Haley did um open it up and uh, blew it out with the with the air compressor but it didn't work and axman uh, have actually said to her that the pressure pads wear out that's a mm -hmm. that's a poor design. Pete from well, it, it, it's has joined us. Yeah, it, it, I, I class these these things which has been going on since probably the seventies. You, you can include it in cars as well. Um, it's all uh, in any type of machinery really. It's built in obsolescence. That's what it is. It means well, that, that you've got to rather than being able to fix things, you've you've actually got to replace them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, good morning to you as well, Pete. Hey, Pete. Good morning, sir. There are, are you leaving that that, that, that concave in, in the bottom all, all the way through there, Doug? Or, or what? Because that's, that's, yes. that's a fair bit of concave going into that tenon there. The, the foot is actually high. It's the foot is lower than the than the tenon. So when I turn All right, around okay. and remove the tenon, I'm done as right. far as turning it goes. Must, must okay. be an optical illusion then, because from here it looks the other way around. That the tenon is longer? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not much different, but it is different. Uh, the, the tenon is definitely, it will be inside was that, the Doug? foot. I was, I was more concerned with you cleaning the, uh, cleaning the inside out. Oh. Right. <laughs> what am I sitting on? Okay, we're good. Well, at that point, I, I would have taken a set of calipers and checked that thickness before I started turning. Yeah, if I didn't know about how deep it was, I would do the same thing. It's still about an inch and a half, two inches deep. Okay. As they say, it's real deep. <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave the tailstock up here for just a minute while I finish the outside and get this uh, lip established. Change you guys over to the overhead. There we go. Can you zoom out on that uh, a little bit, Doug? I bet I can. 
yeah, I'm, I'm close up. I need to be at the regular, regular view. Oh, that's well warped, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Vacuum's in the way. Well, especially where that crack was, it really popped out right there. All right. And I don't know who told who said this, but they made a lot of sense when you're doing a a twice turn piece and it's warped as badly as this one is and so but the way it tends to be do your get your tenon and just the first little bit of the bottom of the outside and and turn go ahead and turn it around and then come back and finish your outside because that way it's all in the same plane now uh, before it was in a kind of a whoppity plane. I got the tenon as best I could. In fact, it's smaller than the chuck is. So, you know, it, it's pretty close. Now I can get this real nice instead of it bouncing around quite as much. So anyway, I've tried that uh, the last few times I've done anything similar to this. It seems to work out pretty well. My only issue is that means I've got to do pull cuts and I'm not, I'd rather do a push cut any day. <laughs> Right, I'm, I'm just going to mute for a minute and um, I've just got to go and do something and I will be back in a couple of minutes. All righty. Got my handle down against my hip for stability. And I'm not fighting that, that bumpy section. I'm just kind of letting it work what it wants to do. Where that one corner is sticking up quite high, uh, uh -huh. was there part of the pith in that area? I, uh, it was, it's where the pith, the pith was, well, let me get to it here. Yeah, you can pith, see where the, the, the pith, pith itself was, was, there. was right here. Yeah, it's just below the pith. We're, we're right at it, real close. So yeah, yeah I'm gonna, when I'll I, end up taking some of that off of there anyway. Yeah, I find that's what usually causes that sort of warpage in that area. Yeah. Yeah, even where the pith was, it will it wants to warp in that area uh, just because that's the way wood works, isn't it? Now, did you say this was a maple? It's cherry. Or cherry. It's awful mm -hmm. pale for being cherry. I was telling Wayne before you got in, Ruby, this tree was standing dead for a number of years. And um, the guy who lives there, he said he was just afraid that a storm was going to come along and, and knock it down mm -hmm. and, and could do some damage if it, <clears throat> if it fell the wrong way. So he went ahead and took it down. But then I didn't learn about it until it had been laying on the ground for three or four years. So it was semi-dry of sap. However, it contained a lot of groundwater, free water. And so uh, I'm back again. OK. And so it's you know, it's got all kind of issues. Uh, you know, things are going to pop up and it's going to be it's going to be OK. Part of that is is why it's as pale as it is. But also. When we go to finish it. That the color will pop out. I just want to let you know that Zed has joined us as well. Hey, Zed. Zed. Oh, there goes the neighborhood. For the better, of course, right? <laughs> Depends on if you like dad jokes or not. <laughs> well, you can't be somber all the time. No, no. I, I, in fact, I think I, I think Zed's got a premiere tonight, doesn't he? 
Probably. Um, I'm pretty certain he has. I'll just see if I, I, I can so. find that. Probably it's six o'clock. <laughs> or be lazy, Wayne. If Zed's got a spanner. He can do it. Put it in there, Zed. I've just put it in. There okay. it is. All righty. That's for for Zombie Wood Turner Z. Uh, that's his premiere, which is later on tonight, or later on this afternoon, depending on where you are. You're not doing bad with those pull cut scenes, though. You don't like them very much. Well, that was that one. I got turned around, and got a push cut going on that one. Yeah. And much, much cleaner cut that way. But there's that crack. Yeah, Ruby, we're right at the pit there, or right on top of it. Um, yeah, when I cut my logs, I try and cut at least an inch away yeah, from yeah. the pit so that I avoid that right from the get go. Yeah, I usually do too. I'm a little surprised that was in there. And Martin Ford to just come in as well. Hey, Good Martin. evening, Martin. Little lump right up here. Let's see if we can get that out. Not. Well, that's a better curve anyway. And Ward's, Ward has now started on the dad jokes. Okay. What do you call and, a boomerang that does not return? Stick. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I knew that one. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah, you can even you can see how different it is. It got what a quarter of an inch there. It comes down to actually goes away right there. So it's uh, not flat on top by any means, but we're going to make it flat here. Just half a second. Now, did you get that Martin Ford has joined us, Wayne? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I was earworming with Brian yesterday, and of course, he, he and Terry kind of get into it all the time about one not listening to the other. There were about three people in a row I named off, and about five minutes later, here comes Brian. Did you mention so and so? <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, the, the, the thing is with Brian, he's he's of ages with uh, with me and Ruby, so you know, um, he, he's he's hard of hearing. His memory's probably <laughs> going. Well, he's a little younger than we are, you know, not quite as yeah, did, yeah. Um, now obviously Brian isn't here, but that, that was a joke, Brian, in case you watch later. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he would take it that way, I think. I hope. <laughs> oh, god, and oh. Gerard started on the on the jokes as well. Gerard? No, this isn't the yeah, this, this isn't the bad one. one. Go ahead. Two man. brothers made a bet, they swear they could fly, and they were right. Could fly. They were. I got to work on that one a minute. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> the, the W R I G H T. Oh, they were okay. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, you got it now. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little slow <laughs> on the uptake sometimes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dear. they were they were W R I G H T. Yeah, I got you. Yes. Now, still a place right there.
Now that pull cut, um, whether you do it right-handed or left-handed, you, if you get that handle down and let that edge shear through the wood instead of scraping the wood, you can get an awfully nice cut out of it. You can. Well, what, what you what you do is you present the side of the bevel both the same way that you would uh, a knife blade when you're sharpening a pencil. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it's got some nice knots in it. There's a section of, of it's not a, it's not straight on in grain, but it's it's uh, going to give you tear out stuff that'll sand fairly well. There's another section through here, and that's just bad wood. I need to come back or try to come back and work on that a little bit if I can, if I can get my tool rest in there. Yeah, still, still a little out down there anyway, so. so same thing, handle down, edge is being presented on like I'm trying to whittle it away with my, or like Ruby said, sharpening a, a pencil with my pocket knife. Well, you can see by the shavings coming off, those shavings tell you you've got a really good cut going. Yeah, my I call them spaghetti shavings. Sure. I'll yeah, spaghetti or oh, um, angel hair. Is angel hair. Term. Doug, I'm going to leave, and then if you'd let me back in. Absolutely. I think I'm getting my computer straightened out. Right. Oh, okay. Right. Todd at Glen Cove has said that he made a pilgrimage to Kitty Hawk to see the, the Wright Brothers Memorial. It was very neat. Hard to imagine, though, what the area looked like in 1903 relative to all the de development there today. Mm. Was it was it not just a field? I imagine it's like a lot of other things in this country. They commercialize it and build it up. And Lucy is commenting that everybody's quiet tonight. No, I uh, Todd, uh, yeah, the, Todd's saying it's a, it's a resort area now. Uh, and uh, Ru Ruby's back, Doug. Okay. Let's see about getting her back in here. There she is. I see her. Hello, you're back again. That's uh, better. She's on, she's, she's on the computer now. Right. My computer decided to update, and then after it updated itself, it decided it had to clean itself up. Oh, oh yeah. God. Oh, yeah. And, and on my iPad, it wouldn't let me, didn't want to let me into the studio at all, even though I've got StreamYard downloaded on it. Yeah. All right. We're going to get this tailstock out of the way. Uh, Todd is, is also saying the hill um, was grassy now, also versus sand. And Larry's saying, yeah, he used to live about 60 miles from the Wright Brothers Memorial oh. and the museum. Very cool. Yeah. You could put us back in the background if you'd like, Doug. We can do that. I mean, I I don't mind looking looking at Wayne at all. But, uh... <laughs> oh, Ruby, you're su you're such a comedian. I, I, I... There are some things I can say, but I'm not going <laughs> to. That's a wise idea, Doug. <laughs> uh, let's see if we can get a little more speed in this now. That's got us up to. Oop, back off a little bit. That's 760. A little bit of vibration, but not very much. We can deal with that. Then again, we just want to slowly work this down to flat or to round on the inside. 
Ray Z started. Um, he was thinking about getting back into archery, but changed his mind. There was way too many drawbacks. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and Heather's got a wicked thunderstorm rolling through where she is at the moment. Well, oh, we've, we've got sunny skies, but we're getting winds probably around 70 miles an hour right now. All right. And I suspect that may be part of the problem I was having with getting in with my computer. Good. Right. We're getting some shavings out of this dry cherry. We're getting there. I'm just kind of establishing my rim at this point. I'm going to go just a hair, probably one cut narrower. Don't want it too thin. It's too big a bowl to be too thin. And Martin is answering Todd here and saying many years back, he did the same. He had a chance to have a go at hang gliding at the beach, and he never got anywhere near the distance the Wright brothers achieved on their first flight. Oh, my. Uh, to get any distance when you're hang gliding, you, you need to go off of a fairly uh, steep cliff area to have yeah, a the... long, longer uh, glide. And if you have a good wind, that helps. The, 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 the going, going off a fairly high cliff area, does that not give you the updraft as well? Yes, absolutely. There you go. You'd think I, the, you'd think I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> Fake it till you make it, right? Oh, God. Zed has said he rated the eclipse on Yelp. He gave it one star. <laughs> well, I'll tell you the, the eclipse that I saw you, you'd have got five five stars anyway we were in the, we were not in the total eclipse here but we were in 90 plus percentile and uh, it got awfully dark in fact it got darker than it is right now and it looks like it's about to storm yeah, what I noticed was the temperature dropped about uh, between 5 and 10 degrees. It got very cold. All of the birds and animals went dead quiet. Yes. Yeah. And, and as it started to brighten again, all of a sudden they were all chirping their little hearts out. Uh-huh. i tell you what. No, the birds balls has said, uh, wow, missed that earlier that the, the piece you're doing was cherry. That's big for cherry, at least on the east coast of Canada. Now, what's the diameter of that, Doug? It's it around about 12 inch now. Yeah, it was between 12 and 13 inches when I started. Um, let's just see what it is now. I haven't taken much off, but I did make it round on the outside. You can stop now. And we are at. Yeah, 12 inch. Uh, 11 and 15 sixteenths. <laughs> okay, Just a okay. Hair under. Just a hair <laughs> under. And it's not going to get a whole lot smaller, if any. I will sand it on the outside. That's about the extent of it. Yeah, that's not an uncommon size for. Uh... No, that's not. I mean, I've, I've brought a, um, a cherry tree down in my garden which was and i'm sure i got around about a 14 15 inch pole out of it yeah if if i have a piece that big what i would do is i would core it yes this was cored yeah no, I does sometimes, one I log just, I... sometimes i just can't be bothered sure out of this yeah. one log i got four <laughs> bowls And uh, let's see. And Michael Martin, McEwen has joined us. Hey, hey Michael. Michael. And Martin said going off a high cliff would give me more than an updraft win. <laughs> oh, mercy. Yeah. Yeah. And Ger oh, the Gerard's coming back with the dad jokes. What do you call a can opener which doesn't work? <laughs> a, a can't opener. Can't opener. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh dear. Okay, we're not bad there. Not bad yeah, there. Go, going back to the eclipse. I mean, uh, uh, um, I be, what, uh, what program was I watching? Oh, they did a special on Sky News over here, 
of the eclipse from from various places in the states where it was happening and mm -hmm. i was i've got to say i was thoroughly impressed i think that on the the sky news thing though that they did more with the um, the moon actually going across the sun rather than actually showing the um the changes in light up there, mm -hmm. actually on right. the ground yes well, I went up to the nursing home and we wheeled a number of the patients out and uh, set them up so that even in their wheelchairs they could watch it. And a lot of them thought it was really special. Lucy watched it on NASA's YouTube channel. Um... I've got to say, Lucy, I did start watching it on there, but I, I just couldn't get away with the, with the with the chat at the side. It was going past that quick that um, it, it was very distracting. So I, I, I went on to the, the Sky News one. Well, all the news channels here had uh, recaps of it. Now, you are keeping an eye on your thickness and depth, right? You you do realize I tend to be a little paranoid about that. <laughs> You've gone very quiet, Doug. Yeah, your volume is, is hardly coming through. Is that any better? Not, Not really. Yet. All right, let's go over here. No, I don't know what's happening, Doug, but uh, your audio is extremely quiet. Okay, is that any better? Uh, just a little bit. Okay, let me try this. How about now? That's a little better. A little better. It, it sounds like your mic's up. Uh, no, it's down where it always is. All right, okay. Um, I've heard a couple of loud clicks that I thought was chips hitting my face shield. It could have been hitting this uh, headset. Let me go ahead and turn that all the way up. Well. Yep, that's great there. Yeah, okay. that, that's, yeah, that's no bad, no bad. I'll leave it right there for now. It's at 128%. Okay, so. Robert, Robert Copperell has just come in. Evening, Rob. Hey, Hi, Rob. Those inclusions. That's a nice cut. All right, let's do a little checking on things here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, this inclusion, <laughs> when I go to feel how, how even I am, that inclusion hits my fingers and it's, it doesn't feel yeah. real good. It doesn't feel real good. Um, well, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I start getting thick right here. So I got to thin it from there all the way down still. And just to keep, just to keep Ruby from being afraid. Yeah, you don't want to see an old lady have a heart attack or anything. I, I still yeah. got 10 inches there in the bottom front. Now, right Heather... Here. Yeah. Uh, now Heather has said that she couldn't see the eclipse here because of cloud cover, so it's been rescheduled until September the fourteenth, twenty ninety nine. 
I guess we'll just have to hang around to see it again, eh, Wayne? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've seen a few rubies, so, um, I mean, another one. Yeah, let's just hang around. Yeah. That's, that makes my third one, I think. Uh, Rob from Caparol, Caparol is saying, is that as, as big as it looks? The ball, that is. It's uh, 12 inches, just short, just short of 12 inches diameter, Rob. So if it looks 12 inches, you're about right. Much better. Still have a lump, but I uh, Lucy, Lucy is asking Wayne, do you know when we're due one in the UK? We are due one at some point. Well, you supposedly had one yesterday, but it was in the very south of England. No, no, we, we had a um, yesterday, we had a partial ecl eclipse, I think it was around about 25%. Which was seen more in the um, the northwest of England and the the west of Scotland, uh, mm -hmm. unless you had cloud cover, in which case you didn't see anything. Um, but but the, but, the, but the proper answer for Lucy is uh, Lucy. Google is your friend. Yeah. <laughs> Explain what an eclipse is, and he replied, "No, son." Dale has said uh, he'll be 143 by September 2099. Where things go at the moment, Dale, uh, by 2099, I'll probably be starting on my either third or fourth journey into wood turning. <laughs> I, I think that'll be both of us, Wayne. Very likely, Ruby, very likely. Gerard must be going online uh, for these dad jokes. <laughs> My dog accidentally ate a full bag of Scrabble tiles. So oh, I rushed him to the vet. No words yet. Well, Fred yeah. says he, he videoed the uh, 1999 total. Himself. No, was, was it, now, <laughs> hang on. Was, was the 1999 one a moon over the sun eclipse or uh, the shadow of the earth over the sun because the, the, there's different types of eclipses right you need a special covering over your camera lens otherwise it'll burn it out because I've got um, I've got photographs of and, and I can't remember when it was, but one of the one of the eclipses, but it wasn't actually the the moon coming across the sun, and being the exact size of the sun like yesterday's was. Uh, the, the one that I had was um, where it's it's a it's a shadow, the the shadow of. Um, it's the sun being behind the earth and it actually uh, does an eclipse on the moon rather right. than on the sun. Right. Now Zed says that he, he heard that you could view the eclipse using a colander. That sounds like a recipe for eye strain. Oh, mm. God. <laughs> sounds like a recipe for burnout, too. Yeah. I just marked um, kind of the high spot in the bottom here, and it's the transition zone. But I don't want to go much deeper in this light part in the very bottom because 
that's almost as deep as I want to go. So I just want to take out this humpy area that's right here where I shaded it with a pencil. Now this is this is where I would start using the uh, traditional grind on my um, bull gouge. Right. Or all what you might call a bottom feeder. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Zed has said the groan of disappointment from weird is what I came for. <laughs> Cheers, Zed. Wayne, that's the secret. You just have to groan at the very beginning of the live, and then he's had he's had his fix. <laughs> All right, just checking again. Still a little bit. So let's mark it again. Come on, there we go. Yeah, that's something I do is mark it with a pencil because then when you're you're spinning, you can see exactly where you need to cut. Mm-hmm. And that that's one of those uh, artisan pencils. It's got a an octagonal piece here and an octagonal piece here so it doesn't roll but uh and it's got the heavy lead on it it's not the little tiny stuff let's see if i get in the right camera uh, i forget which camera i'm on so it's a big fat lead but it does a, it's great in the shop especially here at the lathe it holds up so much better than a normal pencil let's see in fact let's go to that's that's why i use the primary pencils for that yeah yeah Carpenter pencils work well for it as well. Uh, Zed's asking, where is the, where's the pencil from? I, I think he's talking about the kit. Yeah, my, the kit, I got this particular kit from Woodcraft. Um, almost all of the pen kit companies carry them. Let's see, let's keep that handy. I'm going to go... Um, I think this is where I, I handicap myself with this tool rest. I need a I need a longer one on here. What you can do, and what I've seen people do, and uh, now some people obviously use the um, the curved tool rest, and I, I think I've said before on on my lives, it's the type of tool rest that I I just can't get away with but what some people do is actually turn the banjo around the other way mm -hmm. and then put the tool rest in um you, you see where your set where the center of your ball is sloping down and uh, towards the bottom yes right. yeah so the, the turn the turn the banjo around the other way and have the actual tool rest uh going into the ball so it's going down towards the the uh, the inside, which is closest to you, if you see what I mean. I think so. I think so. And Carsten's just come in. Good evening, Carsten. That's Carsten Hi, Pedersen. I'm doing that when I've got this great tool right here. That's uh, an easy wood tool, by the way, for everyone that doesn't know. And yeah. that, that that looks like the uh, the finishing. It's, yeah, this is the original it, finisher. It, yeah, it's round as opposed to square. Yes. Yeah. And it's the larger cutter. Yeah, they work really well. Well, Rob from Copper Owl um, can picture what I was uh, talking about there. It's very difficult to explain when, you, when you're not on camera, I, I've got to say. But um, I've tried it a couple of times, and it, it does work. It, it does allow your tool rest 
to actually get closer to the center so you can still use the gouge. I guess and, you... uh, and Rob has also said you can't go back up the side doing that either. Well, you shouldn't anyway because this is yeah, a you shouldn't high, anyway, high no. grain bowl. And that's a mistake a lot of people make using carbides is that they think they can cut in both directions, whereas you should still be cutting from high to low. Yeah. The problem I have with what you're saying, Wayne, is in fact, if I change cameras so that you can see what I'm talking about. Oh, come on. Here's where I want Alan to be. Gibbs just come in. Hi, Alan. This is what you're talking about, right? Turning your banjo completely around. Yeah. So you've actually yeah. got the, the the tool rest coming in from from the opposite side, going yeah, down so yeah. towards the the inside of the bowl with the way you're standing. Right. My banjo, so, the body of it, my tool rest is on the wrong side of the banjo for that. Right. Okay. So I I, I have to be the other way around oh shoot there's the problem um but what i can do if i get the uh there oh, we go what's having to leave he's got to go shopping with his wife okay see you later ward thanks for kind coming by angle things a little more and i can get at least that end in closer to the center and then i can rearrange here in a minute well, for Christmas, you could ask Santa Claus if he'd bring you a longer tool rest. Yeah. Yeah, now, now Zed has said exactly the same thing as what you've said there, Doug, is mm -hmm. that the tool post is not centered on the, on the banjo. Right. I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't shopped legs and banjos for a while, but I think most of them are putting... The tool rest on one side of the banjo or the other now. Very few of them are doing it in the center. Um, doesn't matter. A longer tool rest, and I've got a longer one. No, with with the with the type of lid that uh, Peter from Twisted Trees has got. I don't know if he's still in, but with the type of lid that Peter at Twisted Trees has got, um, he's actually got. Um, a tool post holding on either end of the banjo, I believe. Yes. I may yes. well be wrong there. No, that's an interesting concept. Yeah, he had to do some modification, if I remember right, to get it. He did, to do that. yeah. Up the, yeah, I think you're right there. Oh, you want to change camera angle, uh, Doug? Sorry about that. Well, recently I just sold one of my lathes. I parted with the stubby. And oh, with right. it, with it went eleven tool rests. Eleven. They were all different in sizes and shapes. I always find with the with the curved tool rest, and um, Ru Ruby has often said in, in my lives, "Why don't you use a, a curved tool rest?" I always find it it gets in the way of um, my tool handle. When I'm well, trying to when I when I'm trying to do things, yep. it might be the type of curve you have. Like mine, I designed the tool rest and literally had a fellow uh, bend some steel to make it and then um, weld the you know the shaft onto it. And right, I okay. I find it doesn't get in the way when I use that one. It has a a long. It's the aim though. It, it is the I've got the, the robust uh, curved tool, tool rest, and um, I've, I've had different uh, curved tool rests over the years, and I just can't get away with them. Maybe it's just me. Uh, Chris said Bailey Woodworks has just come in, and uh, hey, Alan Gibb. Alan Gibb has come in as well. Hi, Chris and Alan. All right, we've talked about it long enough. I've fought this long enough. Let's put the long one on. It's actually you the tool rest. All, to this, all this time you've been struggling and you had a long one? Yeah. Well, for the original. That was the original, man. I love I, I love my robust, but this one is definitely longer. 
this is the one that came with this lathe and I've been using it. I modified it to use with my big bowl lathe after I got my, my robust. But I'm way too low. Uh, the uh, uh, record power lays have, have one of those uh, extensions that you can put into your tool, into your uh, banjo. So you, you have more flexibility with where you place your tool rest. That, that, that helps quite a bit. Are you still using a carbide at the moment, Doug? Yes, I'll switch down to the number one, which is the, right. So a little small well, round one. Yeah, the, the when you when you're using carbides, like Doug said there, uh, his tool rest was too too low. When you're using carbides, what you need to have is your tool rest at a height so the carbide is horizontal and sitting at center height. That's the best way to use a, a carbide tool. Agreed. I just spent two days demonstrating the uh, Easy Wood carbides, and I have to say it's an it's an absolute treat used in their new beading tool. Yes. Oh, yes. isn't it? It, it is Ruby. Uh, Doug, Doug sent me. Um, uh, the, one of the small, um, one of the small tools with all the beading tools, and uh, oh, I, I, all uh, the the full set of the beading tools, and yeah. they are absolutely amazing. What I ended up doing was I bought a handle for each of them. Ah, I don't like to have to change. Yeah, I understand that completely. But uh, I was using it on the last few days on both soft and hardwoods that are normally don't take beads very well. And these were just cutting the nicest beads you've ever seen. Oh, yeah. No, no, I've got to agree, Ruby. And um, I, I could never figure out how anybody could do a negative rake on a bead cutter. But Easy Wood Tools have done a negative rake on a bead cutter, and they are absolutely amazing. They really yeah. are. All right. Come back to the big one just to... I Ronald to... Todd's just come in. Hey, Ron. hey Ronald. Oh, he had to cut the grass. Well, we've, oh, got a, well, we've got a couple days of rain coming, and right now I'm into my shorts. So I figure by the time the rain's done, I'm going to have to cut the grass here. Well, I tell you what, yeah. um, R Ronald, had, he said, sorry, he is a lady. He had to cut the grass. That must have been a hell of a lot of grass, Ronald. <laughs> My wife said something about me cutting the grass today, and I said, it's not going to happen today. But <laughs> if it doesn't rain tomorrow, I bet it happens tomorrow. Well, I did move the snow blower to the back of the shed and put the lawnmowers closer to the front so that they were more accessible. I've got to say, we got rid of all the grass in uh, in our garden for easier maintenance. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Ronald, Ronald says it's three quarters of an acre. Oh, oh, that's, a nice, that's a nice size yard. Just imagine the nice size shop you could put up in that. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what I'd do. Well, I think the weather is, now that I'm in shorts, I can now take the snow tires off my vehicles and put the summer tires on. <laughs> oh, you're, you're chanting it there, aren't you? It's not July yet. <laughs> yeah, I've I've seen snow in July, so don't oh, worry. I'm sure. I'm sure. All right. Hey, Doug, Doug, we're talking about Ruby here. I know. I know. <laughs> okay, I, I, I mean, she's a she's a hardy person. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm, surpri if, I'm, if su I'm surprised it's taken this long to get her into shorts. 
<laughs> well, I did have them on a few weeks back, but winter came back. Oh, it did, didn't it? Holy cow. We've had the weirdest season where one week you have winter and a couple weeks later you have summer and then back to winter. I've turned the speed down to, to uh, what do I have it on? 560. Do a little sanding here. Okay, no, Ronald fun. has said Ron, Ronald says his shop is in the basement, so it's warm in the winter and cool in the summer. And mine and Gerard, is exactly the same. And uh, Gerard has said, sorry, you got to go. We have visitors. Angry face, angry face, angry face. What a time. See you soon. Stay safe out there. <laughs> and you, Gerard. Bonsoir, Gerard. Have a good one. I wonder if it's the yeah. in-laws. Yeah, the deal said that um, his lawn needs to be uh, cut, but he's got to wait for the battery to charge first. Oh, mercy. Here in the U.S., of course, most everybody understands, we're in love with our big gas engines. Bigger the better. And... California has passed laws. They are starting to eliminate small gas engines, working their way up. And uh, people in my part of the country, in Kentucky, they're saying over my dead body. So we'll see what, what happens. It's really, no, no, it is really annoying because, um, with the, with the likes of lawnmowers and uh, hedge cutters and uh, the other types of equipment like that. Chainsaws. <laughs> Chainsaws, yeah, ev everything like that. You get better power with a, a, a petrol engine. Yes. You get better speed with a petrol engine, so it does things faster. So you don't use as much power. Um, yeah. I've got to say that battery development over the years has come on leaps and bounds. I've, I've got yeah. to say that. It yes, has come right. on leaps and bounds. But you will not get the same type of thing, uh, the same type of cut, the same type of speed from a battery than what you will with uh, a petrol. Now, this is the same um, when I'm in the workshop and doing my lives. When I'm doing sanding, I, I use um, a, a corded drill to do my sanding because it's got more power and it's got more speed than a, a cordless battery drill. Yep. And uh, so you are actually l using less power because it does things faster. Absolutely. No question. No question. Right, Todd said a neighbor abandoned his uh, push reel mower for an electric version. The spirit was willing, but the grass was too tough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's no question there that happens. Yeah, and Larry I'm said we have, we have about 10 acres to cut, so a battery's not going to work. <laughs> You're exactly right. <laughs> now, there is a company... Um, that makes they only make commercial grade mowers and they have made a commercial riding in fact it's a zero turn mower that they are claiming will run for eight straight hours um for these guys that cut grass all day long you know yeah, but, I, what, but what sort of cut is it going to do though that's the thing well that's what i that's my question And Lucy said that um, one of her mates cuts her field using one of his old Ford trackers with a topper. Yeah. Yeah. yeah got... Go ahead, Rudy. No, you go ahead, Doug. I was just going to say I've got a little over an acre, just over an acre, that I cut with a zero turn, and I've got it to where I can do it in about an hour and 15 minutes 
Um, if I were to do it with a walk behind, it'd take me three hours. Um, so yeah, I could do it a whole lot faster with my big, whatever it is, 48 inch, 52 inch, I think it's a 52 inch uh, mower. And it does a fine job. That's got a big bark inclusion, but I am not going to deal. I'm not going to worry with it. I'm going to let it be what it is. There is still some tear out. Right. Of the well, Alan, Alan Gibb has said, uh, and Alan's in the UK, our government in the UK pushed everybody uh, and companies to buy diesel vehicles some years back. And all they've done since is put the fuel prices up ever since. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah, I totally understand what you're saying on that one, Alan. I've got a, a, a diesel vehicle, uh, but comparatively speaking, my tax, my road tax, is only £30 a year. Mm. Uh, right, I'm going to take a little more off of this edge because that's got a, a bad spot in the rim right there. So I'm just going to cut a little more off of it. Now that bark uh, inclusion that you have, what I would normally do is say, take some two-part epoxy and I would mm -hmm. lay it out and mix it up good. And then beside that glue, I'd put it one drop of say a black acrylic paint and I'd mix that into the epoxy to cover it. Mm -hmm. And I'd, I'd cover the uh, bark inclusion on both sides, give it about 15 minutes and then sand it smooth and that usually holds it together and uh, takes care of those inclusions okay um... now pete says that sheep cut the grass efficiently and when it stops growing they taste better than batteries too yep i've, and, I've got and, to agree and, with us and not only that while they're cutting the grass they're also fertilizing it Yep. Yeah, and um, I have seen. Um, uh, I, I know there are um, a, 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 not groups. A, a couple of few people over in the here in the UK have got herds of goats that they actually hire out to to clean out uh, field areas. They, they, will, they will they will put the the herd of goats in there for about round about three weeks actually clear a whole field now that would be a great idea except that uh, in the city here they won't allow us to have sheep or goats or even chickens all right okay so that kind of cancels out that in any way shape or form all right, I think I got that. Um, Lucy said uh, that she lets her mate keep his tractors in in her field. He has five vintage Fords, uh, grass cutting as a payment. Oh, nice hey, one. That, that makes, that's a good deal. And Lucy is right, the goats will eat anything. Oh, yeah, goat, yeah. goats yeah. will eat anything. Yeah, definitely. And baby goats are absolute fun to watch bouncing around. And, 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 and I've got to say, when, when Pete was saying uh, stuff about um, about sheep and they taste better than batteries as well, so does goat. Absolutely beautiful meat. Yeah. Now, Zed My has pointed out a good problem that with goats is that goats and sheep bring in seeds like cockleburrs and goat heads, th thorns, and they introduce them to your property. If you let them run free, yeah. If you fence your property, you don't have that problem. Pete's got the solution for me. I disguise a sheep as a dog. Yeah, if I yeah, get there a, you go. if I get it trimmed down so it looks like a, a poodle. No, 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 no. Sheep. Um, I've, I've got to say, sheep look more like Bedlington terriers than anything else. Oh, really? Yes. All right, so I'll just say that my sheep is really a terrier. But he was raised with sheep, and that's why he bleats instead of barks. Hmm. 
And Henry's saying the ones that tickle him are the fainting goats. Yeah. Oh yes. I mean, I, I don't know what goes on with the, 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 with that. Um, I don't know if that's a, a genetic thing or what, but uh -huh. they get that they get that excited to just fall down. Yeah. Yeah, it's just part of part of their nature. Defense mechanism. I know a few people the same way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wonder if that'll ever happen on one of my lives where I get that excited with the chat that's going on, I just all of a sudden collapse into the shavings. <laughs> <laughs> well, Zed's Zed got the answer. He says, I can call my sheep a comfort animal and tell people that I have epil epilepsy and the sheep go. can detect seizures and get an acute work wor working vest. Now, can you, uh, uh, okay, okay, he's mentioned epilepsy, but can you actually imagine somebody with epilepsy who has got a care goat and the only reason, <laughs> the, the only reason that the care goat tells them they're about to have a seizure is when they collapse on the floor? That would be something else. Well, you could always use goat, goat's milk. Yeah. Now, Al suggests just saying that the sheep is a pet and move on. Well, it doesn't work here in the city. My son's former girlfriend, she uh, had a friend that had a puppy at college, and she had always wanted one. In fact, she kept saying she was going to get one, have it call it a support dog so that she could have it at school well lo and behold this girl had this puppy she could not care for and so my son's former girlfriend adopted it called it a, a support dog and got it all the papers and the harness and all that mess when she didn't want the dog around she was fine but if she wanted it to be there, she would have all kind of issues and panic attacks. Never had one when the dog was not around, only when the dog was there. So, you know, what do you, what do, you do? Exactly. Well, if, what if, do you do? Well, if, if you don't have a support animal, what you do is you take up wood turning. And it that, for me. That, that eases your anxiety and press pressure and stresses in your life and time just seems to flow by as you're turning absolutely now doug explain to people why you sprayed that before you sand it i was seeing a couple of lines in fact they're still here there's some lines right right in there i don't know if you can see them or not um those are are punky wood and there's some lines there and so i sprayed it with some alcohol just to kind of raise the grain same here there's just some spots around. So if I raise the grain just a little bit, give that wood just a little bit of support, maybe it will sand a little easier. Um, I could use sanding sealer. I could use, uh, I could put some oil in there. I could do all kinds, of, could use water. Now, Roger is asking you, Doug, uh, how was that clink spore working for you? It's working. It's it's pretty good paper. Um, I need to call the folks here in the U.S. the clean for reps. Um, there's a couple of issues that I noticed, and then somebody, a couple other folks have talked about it. Um, but the paper itself is fine. Um, I do find I have to change it a little more often than uh, some of the other that I used. But it's it's good. It's good paper. Do you not get the um, the net stuff over there, Doug? Uh, probably can. Well, the Abra try some. yeah, the Abranet is made by Merca, not Clingspore. No, yeah. no, Clingspore make their own 
uh, net stuff. Yeah. Okay. And because that, 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 that's that's what I use, Ruby. And it, it, it's not made by Merca. It's actually made by Clingsport. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they I have their think, own. I don't think that's got over here yet. I'll have to look. I've got a catalog over in the other room. I can, I can look, but I, I because I, I, I actually there. got the, the because the they used to do the um the the net in four and a half inch wide, and I got in touch with Rob um after uh, we got together and started talking, and I got in touch with Rob about getting it made in six inch wide, mm -hmm. because four and a half inch wide. You, you use it on your three inch discs. Okay, if you use it on two inch discs, you get two pieces. If you use it on three inch discs, you get one piece and an inch and a half that's left. I, I so, agree. I, yeah, I got him. I I got them to get in touch with uh, with Kling Spore and get get them to make it in six inch wide. So in six inch wide, you get two three inch discs. You get three two inch discs. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's it's a hell of a lot better, um, yeah. but it is made by Clingsport. It's not made by Merca. Yeah, when Abranet first came out, I talked to the reps and told them to instead of selling packets of individual pieces that are what three by six, to put together packets that had all the grits in them. Yeah, and they did that, and their sales increased tremendously. And the Merca has just come out with uh, it's a foam backed sandpaper, and it comes in like six inch uh, rolls. All right, okay, all right. I think so I've got my line because down. The, the, now, now, if, if you're in the UK, Mark, a uh, gentleman woodturner. Is the distributor for Kling Spore, and he he does all the sizes and everything. He does he does mixed bag sizes and everything like right. that. In fact, I will just go and um, grab his link. Is that what you're doing? Go and get his link. That ball is looking lovely, Doug. Well, thank you. I dropped back. I was starting at eighty, which is what I. That's as uh, rough as I get my clings for in, but I dropped back to a 60 grit from my old brand and, and uh, it got my those lines out. Now I can come back with 80 grit and clean it up real nice. One day I spent about two hours trying to sign some sand some lines out of a ball. And in frustration, I stopped and just looked at it and finally realized that those lines were in the wood and there was no way I was ever going to sand them out. You know, that happens. That happens yeah, it was, the, it was the grain in the wood. Did I, I, ever, feel, did I ever feel like an idiot? Yeah, I, I was sanding them on one one time and I thought, uh-oh, I just went through it. I didn't. It was a, it was a spot right in the center. Oh, oh, Pete, the, the, sorry, Pete just put the link in just before I did. Sorry, okay. Pete, I didn't, I didn't see that you've got that. So yeah, if if you're in the UK um, and you you want to use now, I use Clink Spore predominantly now. I, I don't use anything other than Clink Spore, and if you have got a um, a, a Pro Edge, a, a Sorby Pro Edge. Uh, Mark also does the the belts for the Pro Edge as well. And Zed says he has a premiere later today, and he's put it in the link in uh, the chat. That's great. Yeah, I put, I put it in earlier. Zed, you were obviously asleep at that time. Well, he might have needed a comfort break. Those those things happen, Wayne. Yeah, I know, but it's Zed. I've, I've got to get back at him because of his dad jokes. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, was Zed said he, he was in the meeting. Don't tell my boss. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I won't. 
Yeah, and uh, he, 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 he's saying by meeting, he means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you meet all kinds of people when you have a nap. True. All the best people. That's right. <laughs> Well, after after your live today, I've got a meeting too to uh, firm up what I'm doing uh, a week from Wednesday on the Record Power Live. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know if I'll be able to. What time? No, that that's now? it's Maybe. going to it's going to be exactly the same time I think as uh, you and Mark are doing your. Uh, you're well, we, right we, together. We are doing our live at um, twelve thirty p.m. UK time, so that's lunchtime that we're doing ours. Okay, and this would work out about, uh, I believe, around two thirty Eastern Standard Time, which is about seven thirty p.m. your time. Oh, no, 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 I, I was going to be way earlier than that. Uh, for, okay, just to explain what's happening. All right, tomorrow night I'm doing my usual live. Um, next week, next Wednesday, which is the 17th, I am going to be down at, uh, in Mark's place down in, uh, in Devon. And we are doing a live, and it's going out at lunchtime, UK time. It's going out at 12.30 p.m. UK time. Uh, I believe we have Doug getting up very early to come in to Eworm. Yeah, and we, <laughs> we've got Peter and Twisted Trees coming into Eworm as well. Right. Uh, we are planning on having a, a live audience for it as well. Um, so that it, it should it should be good for a laugh, but it is 12.30 uh, p.m. UK time. So it's going to be very early in the morning and um, for people in the states for people in canada and everything like that i was cleaning a piece the other day with this alcohol and last week where that piece of wood came off and cut me right there that alcohol got in there oh I bet you, that folks, was sweet that lit me up <laughs> that felt good not not it burned for a while. All right, let's get a little, let's get a little sanding, a uh, little conversation starter going here. Where are we at? Oh, we're 20 minutes after, but I want to get this on so you can at least see what the color is going to look like. Turn that down. Now, uh, uh, again, uh, for next Wednesday, for when uh, Ruby's doing the, the record power thing, um, I'm, I'm going to apologize now and say I will not be able to to be there to watch and mark will probably not be able to be there to watch because no, that's, the 17th that's, that's the 17th okay. yeah the 17th is mark's birthday that's why we're doing the the live in the afternoon uh it's mark's birthday and uh me and mark uh, sorry kim mark and i are going out for a meal on the on the wednesday evening for his birthday well, I'll give them my all my best wishes. I certainly will, Ruby. I certainly will. Now, Doug, what are you spraying on there? This is some conversation starter. That's lacquer, why I'm starting the lacquer, conversation. Lacquer sanding sealer. This is a uh, for. Uh, it, it happens to be a Mohawk product that I get from Klingspor, um, but this is a tone finish lacquer sanding sealer. So it's the stuff they put on guitars, and it it works nice it smells kind of vinyl-y um, but that may be an additive they put in so that it has a little give for instruments um, anyway give that just a second to dry off and uh, Lucy's asking me if I will be at the Andals on the Saturday I'm sorry Lucy I won't Um, I'll be at Mark's uh, Monday through Wednesday, Thursday, I am hoping to pop over to Plymouth to see um, a friend who I was in the army with for quite a lot of years. And then I'll be traveling back up home on the, the Friday morning. 
Okay. Got that noisemaker shut off. Um, while I'm giving that just half a second, I'll show you that. <laughs> Anybody guess what that's going to be? <laughs> uh, that's going to be that's going to be a chalice. Yes, sir. It is. And it, and it's already off centered centered. It is. That is a branch off of an African sumac. Oh, wow. So I'm hoping it's going to have a lot of nice color in it. We'll see. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. So, but I was sitting there wondering what in the world I'm going to make that chalice with. And I was on my way to bed last night and it dawned on me. I've had this piece of African sumac for 20 years. 20 years? Uh, yeah. Yeah. A guy sent it to me about 20 years ago and uh, I've been, I've used some of it, but that piece is left that I just haven't figured out what to do with it because of the curve in it. All right. We got that. Let's go with, let's go with this. Okay. But what is this? It is Rust-Oleum lacquer, plain and simple. Just All clear, right. high gloss lacquer. You can actually buy that across here as well, Rust-Oleum uh, lacquer, yeah. if you want to use that. I have I used really, it in the past, and it works really well. Yeah. I really like death lacquer, but this is uh, a little less expensive, and it's a whole lot more readily available. I can get this everywhere, you know. Um, yeah, if, uh, for, for people in the UK, if you don't want to go to uh, wood turning places where things can be a bit more expensive, um, go to Hal Halfords. Uh, they do right. a whole load of different types of lacquers and things like that, which work really, really well. Well, this is, uh, is going to take a while to get it completed and get it all finished but you can get you can see the idea that's going to look real nice when it's all can, finished can we close in on it i can dun, dun, dun. Oh. I'm gonna see if, uh, com compared to the um the original piece of the, the original piece what, compared to when you started mm -hmm. it was all very very light colored Right and uh, didn't that's, show. That's kind of what it looked in, like. Yeah, it didn't with. show any any difference in green or anything. Right, uh, but the the difference in green now is absolutely superb. Absolutely, yeah. and the bark inclusion is is a, you know, it just gives it character. This big limb inclusion here, um, the the nice dark green right across there. Uh, it, it's it's a nice piece of wood, really nice piece of wood. It's, and you also did a very nice job of turning it. Well, thank you. Thank you. That's This is a second time turning. That The first one, uh, I did the basic shape on the outside, and then I cored it. I got uh, the one piece I just got through showing you. I thought I had three cores out of it, but I made, them, made these so thick, so heavy, that there wasn't space, obviously. So uh, anyway, I got two. So I ended up with four bowls out of one log. Oh, J J Jamie is really coming late. Isn't Jamie. It, Jamie, and um, you've hey, got Jamie. lots and lots, of, lots and lots of nice comments coming through here, Doug. Well, thanks, folks. It's it's always good, always good. Love having you here with us. It's always a good time. Uh, we get to do a little turning, and you guys get to have the expertise. Oh, of... I'm back. Hello again. <laughs> yeah, I, I double check, make sure you had your pants on first. <laughs> <laughs> braces, uh, braces and belts. There you go, oh, braces. And belts. <laughs> oh me, we we poor guy died a few years, a couple years ago now. But he used to when he would wear shorts, he would have socks with sandals. He would put a belt on, even though he didn't have belt loops in his shorts, and put braces on with it. With shorts, <laughs> poor guy. We laughed at him. We took him down to Nashville, Tennessee, and he wore that down the music strip there. And we just, we made more fun of him. And he said, y'all just leave me alone. That's how I can keep my pants up. <laughs> and we were all glad he kept his pants up. So, 
anyway that's a just a large uh, right just a hair under 12 inch bowl uh cherry uh had some issues in in the wood but uh those issues personally i think it just gives it character i will do some more lacquering there looks like i've got a little bit more sanding to do on the outside but then i need to flip it over do the very bottom take off the tenon um yeah I'm done. Uh, finish cleaning even, up the even, bottom and we'll be done even on the uh, even on the inside some of the lacquer is is, is so straight in so oh yeah 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 it's going to take several more coats of lacquer so well, it'll, it'll, it'll be yeah an old dry piece of wood it it does take absorb quite a bit right oh definitely. even yeah even with the sanding sealer on it it just it's just the way it does it just takes a while so it'll be okay it'll be okay i'll, I'll probably put Golly, I may put as many as at least 12 coats on there. It, it may go as many as 20 coats of lacquer on here. That's just the way I do it. Um, I go slow. I put a coat on and I'll let it, you know, I'll put three, four, five coats in a day, let it sit overnight and harden. Then I'll buff it back either with uh, uh, 320 or with uh, mm -hmm, one of those maroon yeah. scotch break. Um yeah, the, 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 like Doug saying there, the, the, maybe about 20 coats, maybe three or four coats a day. Thin coats. With the, mm -hmm. When you're using yeah. lacquer, it's thin coats, not thick coats. Thin yeah. coats and lots of them. Yeah. Yes. It does make a difference. That, that depth of the uh, lacquer when you do thin coats and then knock it back periodically, you'll get a depth of finish that just people look at it and say wow how in the world did you do that um i could i've got some uh pre-catalyzed lacquer which is more of an automotive type of lacquer i could use it and it builds up a little quicker eventually um takes about six or seven coats and then all of a sudden the first about first five six seven coats it doesn't look like you're getting anything but then all of a sudden boom you got a, a deep shine on that it just is hard to beat so, uh, but anyway, I'm not, I'm going to, I'll use this. This is about a third of a can. I'll probably finish this can on this bowl. Uh, but I got a little more sanding back here to do in this bottom to finish up. So there's not any more questions. Larry, thank you. Appreciate that. Alan, you, appreciate you being here. Ron, Fred, all JP, even JP. I'm glad you're here, JP. <laughs> better, better late than never, right? <laughs> I'm sitting All there. right. <laughs> All right. It's been a good time. Uh, Wayne, you got anything special coming up? Yeah. Um, uh, like I said, um, I'm doing the live tomorrow night. Uh, me and Larry have uh, swapped messages over the past few days about his um, crochet hooks. So yeah, I am yeah. going to do a crochet hook tomorrow night, all out of wood. And uh, obviously, that, that probably won't take very long. So I may well do a, a chalice with some texture and color. We will see. Excellent. What we will see. And Ruby, you've got a, a demonstration for Axminster. Is that who you said? No, record no, power. No, record power. Record power. I'm sorry. Uh, I do that all the time. Record power. Okay. Very good. And you just had one for Lee Valley, didn't you? Yeah, I did the Easy Wood Tools at Lee Valley for two days. And Thursday night, I'm doing another uh, Easy Wood Tool demonstration at the London uh, Wood Turning Club. And then the following week is, is the week of the Record Power demo. All right. Excellent. Excellent. I'm, I'm trying to get some uh, Easy Wood demonstrations lined up, but I'm not getting anybody to return my messages. So I'm going to have hmm. to follow up with all them. I think they think I'm going to go there and try to sell Easy Wood. And I keep telling them I'm not an Easy Wood salesman. I'm just an Easy Wood demoer. Um, I will do some so, demos you know, and use them as Easy Wood tools. You could do a demo on one of your lives. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, I did today. <laughs> I right. used two of their tools anyway. Anyhow, it's been good. Thanks, everybody. Wayne, Ruby, thank you for coming along and helping out. Uh, thank you, all of you guys in the chat. It's been a good time. And with that, I'm going to say bye-bye. Bye-bye.